Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Lydia. And if you are new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button, join the growing family, turn notifications on, while you're down and give me a thumbs up because it really does help me out. So today I thought we could talk a little bit about the Mental Health Act. Now I've done videos talking about individual parts of the Mental Health Act and I've mentioned it in videos before, but I've never done a dedicated video that explains what the Mental Health Act is. And that's what I want to do today. So, without further ado, let's get on with the video. What is the Mental Health Act? The Mental Health Act is a bit of legislation in a court of law that allows a person to be detained against their will for mental health admi assessment, admission, for an assessment. They're the three main areas. It is a legal holding power. I spent a year detained under Section 3 and Section 2. We have a Section 2 which comes first, which is a, 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 a admission for assessment. Then, if you need it, you can be transferred to a Section 3 by a psychiatrist, then it has to be by a psychiatrist to a Section 3, which is a, another holding power that can be that is used for up to six months and it can be renewed for me it was renewed so yeah mental health fact is uh, holding powers so i've been on a lot of section 136s and that is a police holding power where basically the police if they believe you are struggling from a mental disorder can detain you um, it's in two pieces so it's in half so section 136 Admission of mentally disordered persons found in a public place. Section 136 of the Mental Health Act 1983. Patient's name, Lydia Williams. Hospital name, ward name, 136 Burnley General Hospital, Burnley. Why am I in hospital? You've been brought to the hospital by a police officer because they're concerned that you may have a mental disorder and should be seen by a mental health professional. You are being kept here under Section 136 of the Mental Health Act 1983. That you can be assessed, so that you can be assessed to see if you need treatment, how long will I be here, you can be kept here for, or another place of safety for up to 72 hours, it's now 24 hours. I just haven't been on a section 3, section 136 any time recently so I've got the old paperwork. So that you can be seen by a doctor or an approved mental health professional. An approved mental health professional is someone who has specifically trained to help decide whether people need to be kept in hospital. Basically, you get assessed by an AM Section 12 approved doctor and an independent psychiatrist. Then, a Section 2. Admission to hospital for assessment. Section 2 of the Mental Health Act, 1983. Name of patient, Lydia Williams. Name of person in charge of your care, your responsible clinician. I'm not going to say that name, as much as I hated this admission. Name... Name of hospital and ward, Springfield Hospital, Ward 3. It was Ward 3 that I was on. Yeah, I got it right. Woo! Why am I in hospital? You've been kept in this hospital under Section 2 of the Mental Health Act 1983. You've been examined by two doctors who think you have a mental disorder and you must stay in hospital so the person in charge of your care, your responsible clinician, can find out what is wrong and how to help you. How long will I be here? You may be kept here for up to 28 days. During this time, you must not leave unless your responsible clinician tells you that you may. If you try and leave, staff can stop you. If you do leave, you'll be brought back. If you, if, if you were already kept in hospital on Section 4 of the Mental Health Act, then the time you have already been kept in hospital counts as part of the 28 days. Now, I don't have the paperwork for Section 3 because I got rid of it because I destroyed it because I was really angry about it and I thought I was going to be discharged after the section 2 because that's how it normally went for me. It never really progressed into a section 3 before. So I wasn't expecting a section 3 and then when they slammed it in front of me, I went mental. Section 3. You can be detained under section 3. If you have a mental disorder, you need to be detained for your own health and safety for the protection of other people and treatment can be gi can't be given unless you are treatment can't be given unless you're detained in hospital. You can't be sectioned under this section unless you, unless the doctors also agree that the appropriate treatment is available for you. 
How long can you be detained under Section 3? Up to six months. This section can be renewed or extended by your responsible clinician. For six months to the first time, then for six months to the second time. After that, it's for 12 month periods. There's no limit to the number of times the responsible clinician can renew a Section 3. Your responsible clinician is also, can also discharge you from your section before it comes to an end. If this happens, you're free to go home. If your mental health gets worse again in the future, you could be sectioned and back into hospital or a new section. Then we have a section 5-2, which is power of an approved clinician, so someone who is treating you. This can be used in A&E by an A&E doctor. It can be used by a mental health professional in hospital if you're already in hospital voluntarily. It can be to stop you leaving a hospital if you're voluntary. I will read to you quickly what it says. Section 5.2 applies if you are a voluntary patient or inpatient, including inpatients being treated for a physical problem. A doctor or other approved clinician in charge of your treatment needs to report to the hospital managers that an application to keep you in hospital or detention section ought to be made. How long can you be detained under Section 5.2? You can be kept under this section for up to 72 hours. All sections are different and they're used for different things. Personally, I've been on section 136, section 52, section 135, section 3. I think the worst section, honestly, is the 52. Because if you're volunteering, you make an agreement with the hospital that you can leave at any time. I got put on a section 52 once when I was in hospital voluntarily. I caught COVID and I asked to leave so I could go and be home with having COVID and they waxed me on a section 52. After 72 hours they agreed to discharge me but they also got really pissed off at me pressing the call button when I needed a drink because I wasn't allowed to leave my room because I had COVID so what I did was that they told me to press the call button if I needed anything so I pressed the call button and said can I have a drink because I wasn't allowed to go buy a drink and then the woman that bought me says, can you stop pressing the, the call button because it's upsetting other patients. I understand why the mental health act is a thing. Because some people do genuinely need it for treatment. Honestly, patients are being failed when they're not getting part on section 3s and they're just getting discharged on from section 2. I'll use an example of my own as to when I should have been put on a section 3. So, this was my first admission with Becca. Me and Becca was together. Basically, she brought my stuff to the hospital for me, but I'd been assessed and t detained under Section 2 of the Mental Health Act, and I got transferred to a hospital called Springfield, which I, just, I know I just read out the paperwork for the section. I was on one-to-one -one from the minute I got on that ward till when I literally got into a taxi. Literally got in a taxi while on one-to-one. -one. But uh, uh, the reason I got discharged was because I was making attempts on my life to a point where I climbed up a window and then threw myself backwards. It was such a horrible admission. But I went home. I told them this as well. I said, when I get home, I'm going to kill myself. And they just shook it off like I was making it up. And then I got home and I took an overdose and ended back up in A&E. I've been put on a section 136 more times than I can name. Especially by Lancashire Police. I couldn't do anything in Lancashire without getting put on a fucking 136. Even though I'd be out walking late at night trying to calm my mind down. Because when I first moved to Lancashire, I was only on an antidepressant. I wasn't on any antipsychotics, I wasn't on any mood stabilisers, I wasn't on any benzos. Oh yeah, I was part of Propanonol as well. Honestly, the Mental Health Act needs updating it's quite out of date when you consider how many people with mental illness end up sectioned and i guess some people genuinely need to be sectioned for their own safety but i've met people in hospital that are literally there because they feel unsafe now that's something that the crisis team could deal with if the crisis team was fit for purpose but instead we've got an underfunded NHS, we've got underfunded mental health system and more and more people needing inpatient admissions because the crisis team just can't handle basic things. If you, know, if you want to know why I'm so against crisis teams, they hung up on me. 
like the video there and basically well I just don't think the mental health act is up to date enough it's 1983 that it was, it was put into that it became law I just don't think that's right really we're in 2024 it's been 40 years over it's been 41 years yeah we're still living life with that mental health as in place now obviously there was updates made to the mental health act where section 136 and 135 135 is where police can remove you from your personal premises with, with a warrant and 136 is public place only but if i'm honest them small updates should have been made years ago. I don't think it's fair to keep someone in hospital for assessment for longer than 24 hours. Like, I've been in one for 72 hours, right up until the end. And when it expired, I went home because they hadn't found a bed. They had no legal power to hold me. And in short, I went home. I haven't been sectioned since last year in May. So I'm over a year free from hospital which is incredible for me because I've been in and out of hospital for the last six years and honestly I feel amazing for it and I've got no desire or thought of ending back up in hospital because for one I'm not suicidal anymore I have my bad days don't get me wrong I obviously have my bad days but I also have great days and like I said next week God, this week even on Friday I'm going to see my mom and you know I get to do stuff like that now because when I was in hospital on section three I barely saw anybody because I was in hospital in the middle of nowhere in a place called Tithurst which I'll put on map here it's near Tunbridge Wells um the only person who I know that lived in Tunbridge Wells hates me I don't know why I don't know what I did but then in December, I've got my birthday. I'm meeting my boyfriend for the first time. I've got Christmas. Lots of traveling in December. Honestly, life is better without mental health services involvement. Because I've been discharged from mental health services as of earlier this month, which honestly makes me feel really good. I'm confident I won't end up in hospital again. And if I do, for whatever reason, I know it's not forever and I know I can do live outside of hospital that I can do it so yeah that's all I've got for this video thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next one peace